Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an unvigintic polynomial equation. I know that term is not very common, but it just means 21st power. So we have this equation 2x to the 7th power plus x to the 28th power is equal to 3 times x to the power 21. Now, first of all, notice that all the powers here are multiples of 7. So what I can do uh, here is basically I can do this basic substitution where I can replace x to the seventh with u. So if I go ahead and arrange my polynomial in that way, so kind of like write it like 2x to the seventh plus x to the seventh to the fourth equals, and then this I can write as x to the seventh to the third power. And then I'm going to replace x to the seventh with u. So this should give me 2u, 2u, remember that, u to the fourth, and then 3u cubed. Now I'd like to put everything on the same side and make it a standard quartic. Now this became a quartic equation, which is obviously easier than solve. It's much easier than an unvigintic, right? u to the fourth power minus, that's kind of like an interesting name, isn't it? Minus 3u cubed plus 3u is equal to zero. Now, we're going to be looking for two different kinds of things here, real solutions and complex solutions. So for complex solu solutions, I'm just going to guide you in the right direction because I want to focus more on the real ones, but I know some people are going to give me some hard time uh, for not doing the complex solutions. I just want to point out that as well. So first of all, notice that u is a common factor. So I can just pull it out and then I should be getting u cubed minus 3u squared plus 2. Now. Having u as a factor means that u equals 0 is a solution, obviously. And you could tell that from the beginning, because if x is equal to 0, obviously, in our original equation, you can see that it's going to work. So u equals 0 means x to the 7th power is equal to 0, which implies that x equals 0 is a solution. So one of our solutions is going to be 0. And we're just going to make, uh, you know, this at the end as a solution set, we're going to write it uh, all together, all the real solutions. And I'm also going to talk about complex solutions, as I said earlier. OK, so x equals 0 is kind of like a trivial solution to this equation. And now what can we do with the other solutions? Now, we have the u cubed minus 3u squared plus 2 is equal to 0. So look, let's go ahead and write that down. u cubed minus 3u squared plus 2 is equal to 0. One of the things that I've been mentioning in other videos as well is one thing, when you get a polynomial equation, you should always check a couple of things. One of them is the sum of the coefficients. And here, if you look at the coefficients, you'll notice that 1 plus negative 3 plus 2 is 0. So the sum of the coefficients of this polynomial is 0, which means that u equals 1 is a solution, right? If you plug in u equals 1, you're going to see that it works. But that means that it just equals x to the seventh power. And from here, we do get x equals 1, right? Obviously, that's an obvious solution. But let's also talk about some complex solutions. For example, x to the 7th power equals 1. In the real world, it has one solution. But in the complex world, it has seven solutions because 1 has seven complex roots. So there are seven seventh roots of 1. And one of them is the kind of like the super basic one can be written as e to the power i 2 pi over 7 or 2 pi i over 7. That's probably a better way to write it, right? 2 pi i over 7. Now, obviously, this can be written in a different format, which this is more compact, but obviously you could also write it as cosine 2 pi over 7 plus i times sine 2 pi over 7. Now, what's significant about this is that when you use the, the Moivre's formula, did I say that right? Hopefully. Uh, when you raise this to the seventh power like this, when you're trying to raise it to the seventh power, like this. Okay, let me put dot, dot, dot. Basically, what's going to happen is that you're going to multiply 2 pi over 7 by 7, which is going to give you 2 pi. And when the argument is 2 pi, you're basically going to be back at x equals 1. So that's going to be the number that you started with. So basically, you can use this idea to write all the complex solutions that come from here, obviously. But since we're focusing more on the real solutions, x equals 1 is definitely going to be my real solution here. Of course, I am supposed to write 1 here, not 0. OK, so x equals 1 is another solution, as you can see from here, another real solution. OK, 
What else can we do? Well, we're not done yet because we do have a cubic, right? u cubed minus 3u squared plus 2 is equal to 0. We know that u equals 1 is a root. Having said that, we can just go ahead and factor it. Now, one of the things you can do is obviously long division or synthetic division, but that's not necessary. I'm going to show you a much cooler way to approach this problem, and we use this idea in other videos as well. Now, since we know that u equals 1 is a solution, I can arrange the terms, like for example this one, negative 3u squared. I can break it down in such a way that uh, the factors, one of the pieces is going to you know, be with u cubed. So this is what I'm trying to say. What, uh, what should I subtract from u cubed, but that needs to be a multiple of u squared, so that it's divisible by u minus 1, right? That's my goal. Because if u equals 1 uh, is a solution, then u minus 1 must be a factor. So, and the answer is u squared, because u cubed minus u squared is definitely uh, divisible by u minus 1, as you can see. But I have negative 3 u squared, so in order to compensate for that, I just need to subtract 2u squared, and then of course add the 2 at the end. So I kind of broke it down into four pieces so that I can use factoring by grouping. That's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so here's my first group and here's my second group. What am I going to do with the first group? Obviously we know that u squared is a common factor and we know that u minus 1 is going to be one of the factors. And the second piece, we can pull out a negative 2 and we have u squared minus 1 inside the parentheses. So that's my expression now, and obviously this is much easier to factor than what we started with, because u minus 1 and u squared minus 1 have a common factor, the reason being u squared minus 1 is a difference of two squares, so it can be factored. So what I can write from here is that u squared times u minus 1 minus 2 times now I'm going to factor u squared minus 1 as u plus 1 times u minus 1. And now I do have u minus 1 as a common factor. So I can basically pull that. And we knew that u minus 1 is a common factor because at the beginning, remember, uh, at the beginning of this, we said that uh, u equals 1 is a solution because the sum of the coefficients is equal to 0. Okay, so if you pull out u minus 1, you're going to end up with something that is quadratic, u squared, and then if you subtract negative 2 times the quantity u plus 1, that should give you minus 2u, 2u, again, minus 2 is equal to 0. Obviously, we know that u equals 1 is a solution, and the second one is going to give us another, other solutions. Okay. Now, how do you solve this? You can use the quadratic formula. This is not factorable uh, into integers. So, what I can do is, though, I'd like to use the completing the square method here. Let me show you. That's really cool. We use that a lot, and it's also, also, uh, it's also used in the proof of the quadratic formula, which we can talk about one day, maybe Monday, right? So what we're going to do here is basically we're going to look at the coefficient of u, and it's 2 or negative 2. It doesn't really matter, positive or negative, but we're going to take half of that number and square it because uh, if you do that, you're going to get 1, when you do it and add 1 to both sides, on the left-hand side, you're getting a perfect square. Isn't that perfect? Because that gives you u minus 1 quantity squared. And that is equal to 3, which is great because now I can solve this equation. It's a, a perfect square. So from here, we get basically two solutions. Uh, u minus 1 can be square root of 3 or the opposite of that. So I can write it as plus minus root 3. And when I split up my solutions, I can write it as u equals 1 plus root 3 or u equals 1 minus root 3. But remember, u is equal to x to the 7th power. So let's go ahead and set them equal to x to the 7th. And obviously from here, you can take the 7th root of 1 plus root 3 and that's going to be a real number. x equals the 7th root of 1 plus root 3 and of course, you can do the same thing for the second one, the seventh root of 1 minus root 3. Here's a question now. Is the second one a real number? Because 1 minus root 3 is obviously negative, but you're taking the seventh root, therefore the answer is going to be negative and real. So we get two real solutions from here. And what about the complex solutions? Well, if you think about the seventh roots of 1 plus root 3 and the seventh roots of 1 minus root 3, you're basically going to be looking at some complex solutions as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and put it all together and write down our real solutions as a set 
which we're going to call our solution set. OK, what is the solution set? So our solution set, remember at the beginning of this, we found that x equals 0 is a solution. Then we found that x equals 1 is a solution. And then, of course, we get the seventh root of 1 plus root 3 and the seventh root of 1 minus root 3. These are all the real solutions. And obviously, we do have some complex solutions, which we also talked about. I mentioned them earlier. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.